Hey, Boaz here from Next Pittsburgh, and this week on the Inser Backstage Pass, we're going behind the scenes of the Pittsburgh Bomb Squad, which until recently I didn't even know existed. And and Bob here is with the Bomb Squad, right? I am. So basically, we're part of the city police. We have 12 members. We're responsible for not only the city, but we're responsible for 13 other counties to answer calls for suspicious packages. Um, we also do dignitary sweeps, such as when the president comes. Uh, we do. We work in conjunction with our canine unit. We do all the special events. Uh, we do the Steeler games. And so, how does it work? Like, someone calls you and is like, "Okay, there's this weird smoking package. What do we do?" So basically, the majority of the calls we get are what we call unattended bags. Yeah. Uh, that's when someone comes down to the bus stop. They say, "Hey, I've been sitting here for 20 minutes. Nobody's come and got this backpack that's sitting here. We can X-ray that package." see what's in it. If it's um, nothing suspicious, then we can clear it. Uh, if it's something suspicious, then we have some other ways that we can take care of it to make it safe. And so one of those ways is right here, this giant, like, I don't even know, a steel orb or something. So what this is, this is a total containment vessel. If you needed to, you could put a suspicious package inside there to be able to transport it safely. You could also, if it was unstable, you could detonate it in there. I, have you done that before? What would that sound like? We have done it in training, and all it, it's vented, so the black kind of knob on the top. This one's vented. It sounds like a tea kettle. So you can put three pounds of explosives in there. You can detonate it, and it'll just whistle. I was expecting something just like more powerful, nope. like a hundred fireworks. Nope, it's just a whistle, just, just kind of like a tea kettle going off. This one actually has tracks, so we could actually take this one off and move it around to wherever we had to go. So if we needed to bring it somewhere else, we could take it off the trailer. And I imagine that most of the time when you're called, it's not actually a bomb. The majority of the time, it's unattended bag. That's the majority of our calls. And and the other majority of our calls are like the uh, dignitary sweeps, like the president was just here last week. And how do you sweep? Like, is it, or do you have a dog? Like, what are you doing? The city of Pittsburgh has 10 explosive trained dogs uh, to detect explosives. Basically, what we do is we go around the area, the dog will search. if the dog alerts to something, we'll check it out. Like if they alert on a garbage can or a bag that's sitting there, we'll check it out. We train to do this job, so it's kind of like second nature to us. Our training is we go to Alabama for six weeks for our initial training. 24 hours a month we have to train, so about three days a month we have to train to keep our certification. Some of the stuff on here is all stuff that we've recovered. Oh, my gosh. Can you show us some of oh, that? Sure. Um, Basically, what you, you, just have, you just have things, they're just different kind of military ordinance. What normally happens is these are all safe. These are all safe to pick up touch. What happens it's like is, they're little missiles and stuff. Yeah, people bring them home from the war. What happens a lot of times is somebody's relative will pass away. They'll be cleaning out you know, the attic or, the, or something, and they'll uh, come across this stuff, and then they'll call us because they don't know whether it's live or not live. So they'll call us and we have some different kind of training to figure out whether it's live or not. And one of our biggest calls was uh, down in Lawrenceville where we've recovered over 3,000 Civil War cannonballs at a construction site uh, oh my right at 40th and Butler Street. Uh, it's actually in a par- uh, condominium building. It's called Allegheny Arsenal. And that's where they initially uh, made the cannonballs at for the Civil War. And we recovered. There's an example of one in here. And so is there, like, potentially still gunpowder in there? They were all live. This isn't, this, live. this isn't actually one of the ones that were down there. We have, we can, we can show you one of those, but this is what they look like. They were actually all live. That's um, crazy. What do you do in that scenario? Actually, from, for cannonballs, they actually belong to the military. That's actually their property. So this team is just coming back from training all morning. Training, yep, we were in training all morning. We were up at the, our, uh, the old Veterans Hospital up on Highland Drive. There's a lot of buildings up there that we can use to train. It's with, just uh, abandoned, so yeah, you can just, just sort of... Yep. Wait, this is a robot in here? This little one is. This little guy is a robot. Um, we can respond to a call with this vehicle. It has enough stuff in it to be able to respond to a call, but this robot is actually man-portable, so. Oh my gosh, you could just pick it up. Oh wow, it's got like a little gripper over here. Basically, they all have about the same capabilities. It's just this one can pick up probably a backpack to where our bigger one, if it really had to, could probably drag a small person if it really had to. Um, So basically, based on the size of the robots and is the capabilities they have. But they all have cameras on them. Sometimes you bring the robot down, the package is open, and you look at it and you can just clear it that way. Okay, it's just full of pickles or whatever. Right, it's just full of, you know, pickles or, (laughs) yeah. 
I'm I'm just looking through that oh, back nice. camera, oh. and I, I I like using this one because it's like more old person friendly. It just looks like like one of my old RC cars or something. Right. It moves so slowly, but I guess there's no reason for it, it to move quickly. Right. It's almost like a fine motor skill that it needs to do because you want it to be pretty precise when it's going to pick something up. So you don't really want it to be real fast. Oh my gosh! I didn't know it could get that tall. Whoa. The one up in that other truck can actually get to an overhead compartment of an airplane. If it's inside the aisle of the airplane, it can actually get to the overhead. It can go up further in the air now if you needed it to. Gosh, it feels like it's doing yoga or something. Right. What these do is it can either get it higher in the air or it can ba it'll balance itself out. Like you can put the flippers down as like stabilizers. You can see that's looking in the back of that car now. Oh. How many cameras are on that thing? This one has one, two, four, I believe, are in this one. And so is it also like explosive proof? Like if something no. exploded close to it? Oh, it's okay. definitely, <laughs> definitely not, which is another reason why we would rather one of these go. We could sacrifice one of these and get it repaired, obviously, quicker than we could get one of ourselves repaired. Yeah, yeah, better the robot than a human. Right. Oh my gosh, cool. Whoa, is that like a giant ramp or something? So that's another one we have, obviously a lot bigger. Yeah. Um, has a lot more capabilities. You can see where this one's a lot different looking than, than, than the other ones. This is our newest one. Uh, this is made from a company called Telerob. Was made in Germany. Now they have opened up a factory up in Erie. PA, so they're fairly close. This one's more set up for the younger generation. It's a lot easier for them to work. If we had to, we have enough people and enough equipment that we could run three calls at the same time. Like we could run calls in three different places if we had to. Yeah, there's only 3,000 bomb techs in the whole United States, so. Oh my gosh, not a lot. We're very fortunate to have, to, we have six here. We're very fortunate to have the ones we have here. Well, thanks for, you know, sharing one of the 3,000 bomb techs with us today, uh, yeah, Bob. I appreciate I, it. Um, you know, we're, we're all proud of what we do. Um, it, it was hard to get to where we were, uh, to get from where we started to get to where we are now. Um, but like I said, we have a lot of support and um, we have a lot of support from the community. If you would, the, we're one of the most requested units for community demonstrations and stuff for, to yeah. go to, because the kids love seeing stuff like this. Um, we kind of took a back seat to the horses once our mounted unit came back online, but um, they still love us, uh, and and we're we're happy to be out here and happy to be doing the stuff that we do. Cool. Well, Bob, thanks so much for showing us around. This was awesome. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the time.